Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be walking everyone through how to conduct combination wave surge testing as well as EFT or burst testing. Today we're going to be using our Hayfleet Axos 5 transient generator, which you can see in front of me right there. You will also notice the Hayfleet capacitive coupling clamp, which can be seen right over here to my right. And we're going to walk you through a little bit of how to set that up a little later. So let's go ahead and we're going to zoom in a little bit closer on the front panel of the Axos 5 and walk through some of the different connections on the front side of the equipment. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start from the left side of our Hayfleet Axos 5. Uh, right here you'll see your power button. Following that, you're going to find the voltage monitoring for surge. Following that, the current monitoring. You will also find the voltage and current monitoring for dips and interrupts um, if you have it configured that way with your DIP116. Following that, you'll find the direct out for surge. You'll have your um, EFT or burst out. And following that, you'll see over there, I'm not sure you can see it, yep. Right over there, you'll see your line one, neutral, and ground. Um, keep in mind when you are doing testing, if you are going to be testing with power on, you do have to use the coupling decoupling network and these connections right here. You cannot go directly out from your surge right there. So typically what we do is we include a connector right here that's just going to connect to your high, low, and ground. Just going to provide a three-prong adapter right there. So that's just going to go towards your device under test um, from your coupling decoupling network. Obviously, if you have your coupling decoupling network, you do have to have power come into that. Um, so let's go ahead now and we're going to turn the unit around. I'll show you some of the uh, different connections on the backside as well as your power input for your coupling decoupling network. Okay, so all we've done so far is we've just turned around our Axos 5 test system. So let's go ahead and we'll start from our left working our way to our right. Okay, so here you'll see your EUT supply input. And as we mentioned previously, if you are going to be doing power on testing, you do have to go through the coupling decoupling network. So you will see right here, we have three different recessed banana jack connectors right there, which will plug into the corresponding connectors. And we do have your standard um, NEMA style male connector that's going to go to your standard wall outlet here. So that would be obviously ideal for equipment under test or device under test that use that more standard power. Obviously, if you aren't, if your device under test or equipment under test doesn't use um, the standard power, you can obviously use a power supply or something like that as well. All right, so taking a look here, you will see our V-dip here. Obviously, that's for the voltage dips and interrupts. You'll see your ground. Um, this is where you would obviously input your power going to the actual device, to the Axos 5. And then you have some connectors as well here. Um, again, for, the, for our purposes today, for surge and EFT, we're not going to be worried about those too much. However, just be aware those are on the back as well. Okay, so now we've walked through a little bit about the connections, uh, kind of what you need to know to get everything up and running. Let's go ahead and we'll flip it around and I'll show you the connection going to the capacitive coupling clamp and then we'll walk through some of the testing parameters through the front panel. Okay, so taking a look here to my right, you will see our capacitive coupling clamp by Hayfleet. You'll see our Axos 5, you will see a BNC connector right here. And this is just going to go right here to your output of your Hayfleet Axos 5 test system. So as I mentioned previously, these are ideal for testing data or communication lines. Um, obviously, if you're testing power mains, uh, you can go right through your coupling decoupling network right here. And the, one of the nice things about the Hayfleet system, I don't know if you can see it, uh, there we are, is you will see you have the different pulses right here. So it makes it very easy visually um, to see, hey, guess what? Surge pulses come out of here, EFT, and dips and interrupts. So if there's ever a question, that's there for you to reference as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start the system up and we'll walk through changes to the different testing parameters as well as running through um, some of the menus. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've turned on our Hayfleet Axos 5. Here you'll find the starting menu with surge, EFT or burst, as well as voltage dips and magnetic field testing options. Uh, today we're just focusing on surge and EFT. So let's go ahead and we'll select surge. This will take you to the menu where you can change some of the criteria for this test. But you will see here test mode, line, peak voltage, line synchronization, repetition rate, and number of surges. So we're to go ahead and click on line. You will see here line to ground, L to PE. So obviously for IEC 61000-4-5, you have two different kind of general criteria, line to line and line to ground. Um, so we're to go ahead and leave line to ground on there right now. You will see the peak voltage. So obviously if you're testing to level four, you're doing line to ground, let's go ahead and we'll change it to 4 kV. So all you have to do is just hit this back button here, put in 4 kV, select OK. 
So again, that's very easy to do with this kind of menu. Um, and you will see here, there's a little arrow. I'm not, you can see it right there. As you change the different criteria, it'll show you what actually changes on the pulse. So you see the number of surges, repetition rate, line synchronization, you'll notice that right up there. So let's go ahead and we'll change that. Let's say we want to do it at 270 degrees. You said, okay. You'll see it indicated right there. Okay, so that's a little bit about the surge menu. Let's go ahead and go back to the home screen. Let's look at the EFT or burst options. So here's the EFT or burst menu. Uh, same kind of style as the surge or e, uh, as the surge combination wave menu. Uh, you will see a couple different options along the top as well as different criteria along the bottom here as well. So let's go ahead and you'll see the same kind of style there. You will see when you click on the wording on the left side, it actually shows what you're modifying on the different pulses. So you'll see peak voltage, you'll see it indicated right there. And as I change this, you'll see that modified as well. Burst duration, burst period, you see that kind of switch. Okay, so let's go ahead and if we want to change this to let's do 3 kV, what you do is hit that in there and hit OK. And when you're ready to start testing, all you do is have to hit that start button right up there. Uh, we're not going to actually conduct any testing today. We don't have anything hooked up. But if you were going to start, that's how you would do it. Okay, so that about wraps it up. We appreciate everyone taking a look at um, the video here today. And please let us know if you have any questions or if you're ever in need of renting the Hateful Axos 5 test system.